I want to show you now the importance of the baseline grid and how it works with our copy. So just making sure that I left click on the layer called text because that's where I want my text to live, of course. Then I'll pick up my zoom tool and zoom in a little bit closer to my page. Pick up my type tool and then click and hold down the mouse and drag out just to draw a text frame in here, which will be completely empty by default. And then in terms of the house style for this particular magazine, well, I'm going to go for a font that's available on the Creative Cloud and uh, called Adobe Fonts and it's called Merryweather. I'm going to make sure that that is set to regular. The size of the text will be nine points and then I will change the auto leading. If I click on the drop down menu there, it tells us it's using auto leading. That's not what we need. That one needs to be 11 points. And then I'll go to the type menu, go down the list and choose fill with placeholder text. I do. It's going to put some lorem ipsum in there, which uh, is Latin and uh, probably makes no sense to anybody. I'd, I've never met anybody who can actually speak or translate Latin. But that's what we're given, at least for our placeholder text. Now, you'll notice at the moment that that text does not line up with our gray lines of the baseline grid. And that's because that's the way it works. You have to tell in design when you want some text to align to it. So if I just go to uh, click in there and then press Control A or Command A to select all the text in that frame. In the control panel at the top of the screen, making sure that you are on character formatting options with the capital A. Over on the far right hand side, we have what looks like two columns, which they are. But here at the moment, they're set to do not align to baseline grid. But if I hover over and click on the one at the bottom, it does. And so now every line of my text will snap to this baseline grid. If I go to the window menu, go down to styles and choose paragraph styles. Well, then I can hover over the create a new style icon, hold down alt, alt and left click on that symbol. I can call this body. Make sure the style I'm creating is applied to the text in the text frame. Previews turned on and notice in here now, basic character formats, Merriweather, regular, nine points on 11 points of leading, which now matches our baseline grid and it snaps to it as well. And then under indents and spacing, you'll see that we have aligned to grid, which really means aligned to baseline grid. And at the moment, it's set to all lines. You'll see that in a short while, when we look at things like captions, we're just going to make the first line snap to the baseline grid and all others will just use its own built-in leading after that. But with that done, I can click OK. When I hit the escape key on the keyboard, you'll see now that it is possible to click on my images layer. And if I just create a box in here, I can click and drag and just draw a rectangle here as a kind of a mock up for an image. You'll notice the top of that image lines up with a line of our text. And if I wish to change it, I'll switch to my selection tool. I can just drag and it will snap to the different increments of the baseline grid. So it is a fantastic way of being able to get your text and your images all lined up. So that's the reason why we have a baseline grid. And that is my body copy added to this document. So I'm going to go to view and choose fit spreading window. I'm going to create three further paragraph styles to accompany the body copy. I'm going to do that by speeding the video ever so slightly. And at key points, I'll talk through the specifications for that type formatting. All I'm doing here really is just experimenting with type to get a hierarchy of heading, subheading and body copy that work well together. So let's first of all start with the heading. And if I double click on there, I'll go down to the plus to create a new paragraph style. And from here, I'll name this, of course, heading makes perfect sense. Uh, it will be based on no paragraph style and it will be set to preview and apply style to selection as well. I'll then click on the second item in the list. You can see from here that I've set this to be Futura heavy because I want a nice eye catching bold font so that when someone lands on this page, that's one of the first things they'll see and then read and be drawn to the article. The size of the text is 36 and also note the leading value it's set to 33. So that lands on one of our increments of our baseline grid. 
11, 22, 33. And the spacing in this case works because I've tried to create a marriage between the size of the text and the line spacing. I've also tightened the gaps between the text with tracking. So just to show you, if I was to set this back up to zero, there's a lot more space between each of the characters. But if I set that back to minus 30, it just tightens the space up between them. And again, for a heading, that just helps it become a little bit more impactful. Under indents and spacing from here, well, originally I did set this at first line only whilst I was experimenting with the leading value. But to be honest, I could just set this now to be all lines. And because I've set the leading value to be exactly one of those increments of the baseline grid, it will work fine. I also found that when I was trying to experiment between the heading and the subheading space, that I had to include space after, which means adding space after the paragraph. Now, if I set that back to zero, notice that the space here, it's uncomfortably close. So if you do want to get a little bit of breathing space between two hierarchies, the heading and subheading in this case, you can just increase the space after. Now, because I've only changed that to one millimeter, it's forced that next paragraph, the subheading, to move down to the next available baseline. So even a tiny amount in here, because we're snapping to baselines, is now actually forcing it to move a lot further. So I eventually set this to three millimeters just to be safe. And with that done, I'll go down to the bottom and click OK. If I click in the line for the subheading, hover my cursor over, hold down the Alt key and left click, call this one subhead, Again, apply starter selection and preview turned on. When I click on basic character formats, note again that this is now same font, Futura, but the font style is light. I don't want it to draw attention away from the heading. By the time someone's read the heading, they should already be reading on and then looking at the subheading because the heading's done its job. At set to 18 points, again, it's double the size of our body copy. And the leading value, well, on this occasion, I found that if I was to go to indents and spacing and change that from first line only of that paragraph to snap to the baseline grid and set it to all lines, there's just too much space there. And I know it's not a great deal of uh, a, a, an increase or decrease in the size in there, but again, I just felt that aligning only the first line of that paragraph, wherever subheads applied to the baseline grid was enough after that, just going back, the leading value takes over then. So the gap between the first and the second line now isn't 22 points. In effect, it's 20. Just having a little less space in there made those two lines work better together. Under indents and spacing, I added some space after because that was set to zero. And clearly that is too little. Um, so these are split over two text frames. But if I increase that, you'll notice that that drops it down and we get a nice clear space between them. And I'll click OK. Finally, the caption down at the bottom, if I click in there, Alt and left click on the Create New Icon, call that Captions, apply Start Selection turned on. Same font, this time it's uh, Book Oblique. So this is, uh, it's like an italicized version of the font. Notice the size of the text, it's eight points. So it's one point smaller than the body copy. And the leading value in here, it's just set to auto leading. Um, I could have set that to 10 points, but I, I like the space between the lines in the caption in there. And uh, indents and spacing, I left this set to first line only because it is a little bit small, that, that text for the caption, to have it split across increments of 11 points. Uh, with that done, I'll click OK. So when you're creating and experimenting with your text, it's important to try and remember a simple equation for deciding the size of your headline, your lead in or your subhead and your body copy. Start with your body copy because that's the thing obviously your document is led from, the leading value, the size of your text. When you want to go under the hierarchy up, then in my case here, the subheading, it's double the size of my body copy. When I go from the subheading, so the headline, the headline's twice the size again. So every time you go from one hierarchy level up or down, either double or half the size of your text. That's a good starting point for getting a good, clear differentiation between the look of your text.